Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video to go through the SpeedyB application. Now, for those of you that follow the channel, you've already seen this little device. This is something that plugs into the USB port of your flight controller and you can power it and it gives you Bluetooth connectivity to an application on your Android or iOS system that allows you to do all the settings. So if you want to go and have a look at the original look at this thing, uh, this one's actually mine. I've given a couple away on the channel as well. Then go and have a look at that video. But I've had a number of questions on this little device in the videos asking about can you do this in the app, can you do that on the app. So I thought it would be useful to actually go through the application in a little bit more detail. Because to be honest, I kind of skipped over it when I did the review because the interface is very, very similar to the real Betaflight interface that you get on your PC or Macintosh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this in a second and I'll actually put the screen insert so I'll screen capture this thing rather than you trying to see it uh, in this kind of reflective image. Uh, this is a Samsung Galaxy Tab uh, but it can run on pretty much everything. So the first thing we need to do is let me just put this to the side and let's fire up this thing and then I'll access the app. So to set this up it's really straightforward you just power it from a battery stick it into the USB port of the flight controller that you're interested in. So let me click the Bluetooth icon. You can connect via a cable or via Bluetooth. So it's going to scan and find the adapter. There's the adapter on the screen. So I'm going to click on that adapter and then it's going to initialize, download all the bits and pieces and start the application. So here's the application itself. If I move the flight controller around, there you are, you can actually see it moving on the screen. And we have a very similar setup on here. We can see that there's nothing in the data flash in the top right hand corner. Along the top, we can see we have a gyro, accelerometer, and a barometer installed on this omnibus flight controller. Now, I'm going to just scroll down the first setup page. So this is the kind of setup page that you see at the very beginning of beta flight, where you can see everything moving around. We have information on the current and the battery. And if we had a GPS, uh, we'd also have that information on here. And at the bottom, we can calibrate the accelerometer and the magnetometer as well. Next tab then is going to be for your ports, and this is exactly the same. So we have the port configuration. We can set it up for whatever particular protocol that you're interested in, or if you have a particular sensor, or if you have particular peripheral. So smart audio, tramp, run cam control, all those kind of bits and pieces as well. Next tab is the one that has an awful lot of meat in here. So we have the ability to change how the board's actually set up with the different models. Uh, apologies for some of this text looks a little bit small. I think the application is really designed for use on phones rather than anything else. But hopefully you can read it. Uh, we can set up the gyro and the PID loop frequency. We can set up whether or not the barometer is turned on or off. We can give it a craft name. We can set up the camera angle the ESC protocol that we want to use, whether it's deep shots or whatever. And pretty much everything in here is everything that you would expect to see in that main setting. So at the bottom, we have all the other features that you can turn on or off, whether you want uh, OLEDs, whether you want on-screen display. You can save all those bits and pieces. And when you're happy that you've got everything set, you just click Save and Reboot, and it will actually do that Save and Reboot as well. When we come back, those settings have changed. Next tab is for the battery and the power. So onboard ADC is set at the moment, but you can change that. All the cell voltages you can set, voltage meters you can set. That's all in here. Next to the PIDs. So you can absolutely change the PIDs and also the rates in here. So by just clicking on them, you can change the numbers that you want. Here we go. As easy as that. So there's all those pieces, controller settings, gains. Then we have the RC setup as well. So you have the channel map. I usually use the Spectrum one, save that. And there's all of the different pieces, what the low stick threshold is, what the RSSI channel is going to be. You can even see all the uh, different settings. You can add different modes for stuff, so we can add a range. 
So there we go. Let's have that for arming. I normally have that on auxiliary two. We can have angle in the low position. That's going to be auxiliary one for me. Save those. Horizon auxiliary one for me again. And you can just set it up as you would uh, normally. Then the next tab we've got is the motor tab. Uh, we could actually go and enable the motors in here and actually run them up just like we can on a regular beta flight setup. We have the on-screen display settings so you can move things around. It's not particularly intuitive, but you can very quickly get the idea. You can just kind of move them around. I do like the fact it gives you um, a little almost like a little um, grid that you can actually put everything on. But you can very quickly go through here, figure out where you want everything and pop it on. And we can save that. Exit out there. And then we have the black box configuration settings. We have the VTX settings. So that's if you want to change your video transmitter using Tramp or something like smart audio but you can actually change your bands the channel and also the power settings in here as well then we have the CLI so we can actually do everything that we would normally do in here and then when it comes back we can look at the device status there is all of the information so hopefully that's helpful for some of you that are interested in the application uh, for me i've not found anything that i've wanted to do at the field that i couldn't do with it yet but um, as sure as beta flight adds more bits and pieces to the interface that you run on your mac or your pc i'm sure they'll have to update this application as well but as you can see it's pretty well thought out and everything from changing your flight modes pids changing things like your frequency and band settings and that kind of jazz it's all in here if you found that video useful or like the content then please hit the like and subscribe button down below if you want to go the extra step you can become a patreon of the painless 360 channel and help provide support for what i do here all the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.